And just as we went to break an objectionable objectionable conduct penalty against the Alouette. So they march it back in great field position again for the Lions. Tim Brown fielding it and bringing it back close to the midfield strike. Well, that's a good point when you talk field position, Chris, because in that first quarter, Montreal started average on their own 29. The BC Lions on their own 47. And again, good field position here. Just shy of the center field stripe. So Travis Ule has been working on basically half the field. And we're told that SJ Green was the target of the flag. 58 is eligible. He's got to be the target for these young quarterbacks. At the 54 of the Lions, BC starts. And when Johnson throws a flag. men in the formation BC 10 yard penalty repeat first down 13th man costs Mike Benavides brought in the tight end Middleton the offensive lineman that they brought in to help out with some depth and Sean Gore it looked like was the receiver that was on the field as well and shouldn't have been he's the tight end right here covered by Gore one too many men on the field for the BC Lions and he just heard the official 58 is eligible newcomer to the Lions acquired from Calgary and the pass downfield is incomplete intended for Arsenault and Middleton was out running a pass route <laughs> Starts out at that tight end. You heard the officials say that he was an eligible receiver. I'm not sure if he was the number one target, but he did try to release, push to the flat, and Manny Arsenal ran that out, but underthrown by Travis Ule. Arsenal working against Jeff Tisdale. Second and 10. Second and 20, excuse me. Lule to the sidelines, the pass is caught, and there's that Arsenal Tisdale matchup once again, just across midfield, but short of a first down. It'll be short. I think Lule is more comfortable throwing to Manny Arsenal than he is to Steve Middleton. Although it's a good Probably change a better up. choice. Yeah, I think it's a better choice. It's a change up, plays tight end. So another thing it does is that makes sure opponents don't just think it's going to be run when they bring the tight end set in. Paul McCallum has had plenty of work on uh, these kicks into the corner here, trying to pin the Alouettes. Oh. And maybe he'll throw as they fake it, a completion, and it will be a first down. So the veteran McCallum to Anton McKenzie, and it's a Lions first down. Anton McKenzie is what's called the personal protector. Lines up back about seven, eight yards from the line of scrimmage. He's there really for protection, but watch him sneak out early and no one picks him up. So McCallum realizes that he's uncovered. I'm not sure if this is called or not, but if you exit the line, if you exit the formation and sneak out there and no one comes out to cover you, a veteran punter recognizes it. First down, BC. Lions got burned the same way out of punt formation by Calgary last week. 43-year-old Paul McCallum with the completion. And now the toss to Tim Brown tries the left side. And he gets brought down by Lavarius. You know, BC Lions have had the field tip their direction, but you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking that they get antsy if they don't come away with a major on this series. And Mike Benavides, his score could be a lot worse in his favor on the road. Now, the word is it was pouring rain before the game. The word is there's another system coming in that might hit us around the third quarter. So a good start, important for both these teams. And I, Mike Benavides wants to take advantage of this field position. Manny Arsenal shaking up on that last play. Bill Rochelle out to assist him. Five yard pickup for Brown who leaves the game. And Andrew Harris checks back in. Travis Lule's 
still looking for his first 300 yard game of the year his season best 284 against the Edmonton Eskimos here comes the blitz second and five flag down Montreal maybe offside in the pass for Iannuzzi sails the strider too too far Bruyette offside on that. It looks like it's going to be on that on that blitz. Tried to time it up, but just a half step. Offside, Montreal. Five yard penalty. Repeat, second down. He's coming on the blitz, and there was real pressure. Travis Ule couldn't complete this pass because of, because of it. There's Bruyette coming from the linebacking core. They run a little bit of a stunt with John Bowman as well. He gets there too. You can see number 10 just a step ahead of the snap of the football again another donation by Montreal well the short yardage team comes in big boys hunker down Thomas DeMarco at the controls and DeMarco sliding off the left side behind big Patrick Cabongo who was grew up here in Montreal been a real good year for Patrick Cabongo with some of the injuries up front. Cabongo's moved into that starting role as the left guard for the BC Lions and throughout the first now into week eight of the season. Week BC Lions seven games played. He only has one holding call and has played very consistently top to bottom. Six game starts last year. He has been the starting left guard for each game this season. The friendly giant. Rain starts to come now once again. Lule drops it off. Here's Harris. H.A. Emery miss and then gets brought down by John Bowman. Well, it came down hard in the pregame, Chris. I mean, we were on our way up here and, and we saw it. It was just coming down in buckets and and you and you thought, is this going to last throughout? <laughs> Speaking of Patrick Cabongo. Out there getting warmed up in the rain as the big guys go. It doesn't bother them at all. But the, we heard that it was coming back in around the third quarter. Looks like it's arrived a little early as the crowd scrambles to get cover. Second about a yard and a half for Harris. Uh, John Bowman there to grab him. And then they think pull he got back. There. And I'm not sure. I don't think he got there. It's going to be close. John Bowman, the eight-year veteran who told us the start of the year I think Stu's going to come back before this season's over his good buddy Anwar Stewart let's see where they mark it at the 21 so they're going to be a yard short boy it's a full yard well Aaron Laverius is the starting defensive end opposite John Bowman but Andrews or excuse me Anwar Stewart will rotate in so DeMarco back in. And again, third down. Tenth play of the drive as the Lions try to extend it. Gore in motion. Handoff. Oh, and no. Andrew Harris going to be able to turn the corner. No. Gets drilled out short of the first down. It's a turnover on downs by a fired up Alouette defense led by safety Mike Edom. Short yardage, and this time DeMarco wants to give the ball to Andrew Harris, who's going laterally along this line of scrimmage. I'm not a big fan of this. I know BC Lions fans aren't either. Gerald Brown shoots the gap he had the big play last week that got the Alouettes the lead late against Saskatchewan ended up losing that lead Mike Edom helps clean him up with the tackle but Gerald Brown with a great shoot through the gap makes another big play turn it over on downs well we've seen rain down like now. this a few times <laughs> this year that's as heavy as it's been though and Tanner Marsh stays in at quarterback and hands it off to Jerome Messam 
Well, another Texas-born quarterback. There's a few of them in the league. I wonder how many rain games like this he played down in Texas. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, son, you getting a chance to play against the number one ranked pass defense in the, in the league, in the BC Lions. Not bad against the run either. And it's your first playing action in Canada. And guess what? It's pouring rain. Two for Messam, second and eight. Quarterback draw straight ahead. And Tanner Marsh dropped the football, had the first down. Who's got the football? Looks like Christian Mack got there quickly. Riding with Josh Bell to see who comes up with it. Slippery pigskin. Man, it's the BC Lions that come up with the football. And they got That's it. That's Jabbar Westerman. So Westerman with the fumble recovery, and after turning it over on downs, the Lions get it back. Elamimian with the hit. Westerman gets the football. Tim. Be a good night to be at the Olympic Stadium, wouldn't it? <laughs> I thought they didn't like that anymore. Playoffs only. Ah, the roof leaks. <laughs> That's true. In this rain, he'd be leaking. That was Lula. Looked like a little confusion there as he is swarmed at the 35. Another first down loss for the Lions. And tough start for these young quarterbacks for Montreal. Tanner Marsh get a little playing time against Toronto, but only his attempt at two passes coming in to this game tonight so limited action in his first year had the first down puts the ball on the ground Solomon Elamimian and I think Corey Banks was involved as well knocking it out of there and Jabbar Westerman comes up with it second force fumble by the Lions middle linebacker first down production has not been good for the Lions second and 11 Lulay will drop it off and there's Harris once again trying to make the first man miss not this time Wiet cleans up after Jeff Tisdale had slowed up Andrew Harris. You're right, Chris. It's first down production that's been the issue. And early on, it was a lack of protection for Travis Lule. Just didn't have time to settle his feet in the pocket. But as this game's gone on, the protections improved. They just can't get that five, seven, six yard gain on first down, get them in manageable situations on second down. Of course, the weather isn't helping. One. So in the slick conditions, it'll be a 39-yard attempt. Out of the hole to Thomas DeMarco for Paul McCallum, who puts it through. The Lions increase their lead up by 15 here in the second quarter in rainy Montreal. Dackling hunger across Canada. Check. Montreal closing a little closer to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They've got sacks for Mark Olivier Bruyette and safety Mike Edom so far tonight. And for a team that has struggled, the Montreal defense uh, pretty strong on the stats page. Ranked third or better in most categories. Carriers spilled up across the 30-yard line. Tanner Marsh gets set to go back to work against a very stingy Lions pass defense. Now, it's still early in the year, but that has been an impressive number. Under 200 yards allowed for the BC Lions after seven games to the 2013 season. And there's interesting teams. I was on that Saskatchewan team in 88. Didn't realize that played there and it. Didn't that know was, you were that good. Well, no, but the, the BC Lions beat us in the in the final that year at home or in the semifinal. Rich Stubler. Rich Stubler is the architect of a couple of those defenses. Here's Marsh hearing it out. He's got a wide open man to Rob Carter has the catch. And Chris Carter's son had the big play and then dropped the football. Let's see if they rule him down. Six foot five, 205 pounds. Deron Carter with a 52-yard catch, his first in the Canadian Football League. And up until that point, the Montreal Alouettes passing had just 14 yards passing against this BC defense. And just as we say it, 
They have a bust in the secondary, and that's J.R. LaRose coming all the way over to try and help out. The wide receiver to the outside here, little stop and go on Cord Parks. Gets in behind him. So the son of a pro football Hall of Famer making an impact with his first catch in the Canadian Football League. And Marsh, corner right, looking downfield. And he's got another completion, Eric Delorier. And suddenly Tanner Marsh has the fans in Montreal excited. Yeah, and, and the fact that he's muscling this ball down the field in these conditions is impressive. This was supposed to be lined up as a hit screen to Arlen Bruce on the outside, but Tanner Marsh thought, I want to get a little bit more. I got an open receiver down the field. Over, over. Well, that a little bit of Ricky Ray on that football, didn't it? Well, 52 to Deron Carter, 20 to Delorier. And the Alouettes are first and goal. And Whoa. a problem with the snap. Marsh picks it up, and he'll get back close to the line of scrimmage. But a wasted down in the score zone. And it looked like this one, it didn't, like the early one for the BC Lions, that had heat on it from the center. Luke Rodeur. Jordan here has a pretty good snap in the shotgun, just goes right through his hands. I think Tanner Marsh took his eyes off it, went to go for that handoff or play action, took his eyes off it just for a split second before it arrived. So it's second and goal from the seven. Red zone production's been a problem for the Alouettes this season. There's a pass for LeBlanc, and he is cut down. Veteran Ryan Phillips denies Lavoie route to the end zone. Jim and Pop's going to get pushed from the crowd to yep. go for it here. Lavoie, little wave two, and no movement on the sidelines yet. What's he going to do? Real early to be gambling against one of the top ranked defense. You almost want to take points if you're in this position. And this is a, they're trying to keep that football dry, but you're three yards away from the goal line. There's one of the biggest differences from last year, about the same number of trips to the red zone, less than half the production. And now it's third and goal for Marsh. Out the of the points. gun, puts it in, the end zone, touchdown, S.J. Green. Pays off, but I think you take the points. <laughs> it works, and it'll grab some Montreal momentum. Number one receiver for the Montreal Alouettes, S.J. Green, number three in the CFL. And the Alouettes wanted the football back because they wanted for Tanner Marsh. That's right. Oh, and he recognized Blitz up the middle from Solomon Aluminium. Saw him coming, left his spot in the linebacking core. That's where the void was, and Green got there. S.J. Green threw it into the stands oh, the and realized, hey, that, that thing's a souvenir, and he just went over to give it to Tanner Marsh. Extra point for B.C. native Sean White, and Alouettes get back in the game. Well, the big throw to Deron Carter got Tanner Marsh going in this offense. And that's a tough throw in these conditions. He got it, took advantage of a bust in the coverage, and then S.J. Green comes inside. Nice inside route. He sees that Solomon Elamimian is gone, and he's going to come in, make that inside move with the linebacker leaving the middle. Tanner Marsh recognizes it. Outstanding for such a young quarterback to see nobody in front of him with the blitz coming and got rid of it before the blitz could get there. Fifth touchdown of the year for S.J. Green. Third in the league in receiving. And the 20.